Today we're going to be hooking up our Airtable database to Pinecone, a vector database if you don't know what that is. Also, we're going to be building a chatbot. We're going to be hooking all of this up to NoLoco. Strap in boys and girls, this is going to be one automation tutorial that you don't want to miss. Let's go. All right, so we're going to kick things off as we usually do with a very quick demo. In front of you, you have a NoLoco instance. Okay, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's essentially powered by an Airtable database. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is this little thing, this little chat uh, icon. And this is our little chatbot that is running off of our Pinecone database. I can ask it any question I want. So for instance, let's say I want to find out a little bit more about this particular record. So I'm just going to copy this stock ID. Uh, what is a and we're going to be getting our answer. Here we go. So it's a water, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the manufacturer suggested retail price. OK, let's say I want to find out more about this one. What is SP140? And it's going to give us that. If I was to buy both, how much would it cost? 2350 uh, plus. Yep, that looks good. 3849. Now, of course, you can make changes to this database. So for instance, let's say I want to change this uh, price from 2350 to let's say 25. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and upload to vector. And this check mark is going to disappear when the information has been processed. And really, I can go ahead and open up my chat. And there you go. Now it disappeared. So I can ask it, uh, what is the price? Here we go. 2350. It's remembering the old price. Uh, are you sure? 25. Having said all of this, now let's go ahead and take a look at how this whole thing is set up. Let's kick things off with Airtable. Essentially, this is just a very basic Airtable database of a simple bike shop, right? Where we have some of our spare parts. There's some categories. Now, in some cases, I've uh, also like done little uh, if statement over here for uh, like all models. So if there's like a spare part that relates to all bike models, you know, there's like this little thing over here. We also have our vector UID placeholder or like field where we print our uh, vector ID. We also have our upload to vector trigger. Essentially, this is what gets pressed and we refresh our vector database with new data. However, in my demo, I showed that I actually need to like press something. Well, you don't have to press anything. Technically, no logo can fire off uh, the same request when something gets updated. So the user doesn't really have to do anything. It's just for the purposes of the demo that I did this little uh, trigger, not like a manual trigger. That's basically it in terms of uh, the database. Yes, there is like some related bikes, but again, nothing really crazy. Now, let's go ahead and jump into make.com and see how the make automation works. Now, at this point of the video, I would like to thank absolutely every single one of you who's subscribed to our channel, who's watching us and supporting us. Now, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring that bell icon uh, so that you don't miss any future uploads. Back to the video. First of all, we have our trigger and we trigger our information in the same way we have been triggering it the same way for years. So if you've been watching the channel, you know where I'm going with this. We simply have a simple automation in Airtable uh, when a record matches conditions. If upload vector is checked, we run a simple script that basically sends the Airtable record ID to make. So copy this, replace your webhook with the one that make gives you. And yeah, this is my record ID. Just make sure that you press the blue button and map the Airtable record ID in there. And that's basically it. Finish editing. Don't forget to turn this on. And congratulations, you've dealt with your trigger. Now, when it comes to make, uh, and if you don't know what make.com is, go ahead and check out the description. There is a affiliate link that will help the channel a lot and you will get a month's worth of pro account. Plus, I think you get 10,000 operations, which is really cool. So make.com essentially handles our um, writing procedure into Pinecone. Pinecone is our vector database of choice. And we're going to get to that. Don't worry. We have our webhook essentially 
essentially our trigger then we get that record as you can see i'm just basically getting that spare part then i'm using make ai tools chunk text and this is important it looks like this i'm basically creating a big piece of text i'm creating a chunk size and a chunk overlap all of this is really important for the vector database later on so just press save at this point then we just aggregate all the chunks into a custom array okay just like so nothing else next we iterate through that array i have a leftover router here you don't have to use it then i'm basically uh, using embeddings. I'm creating an embedding in my uh, ChatGPT API. I'm using a custom API call, uh, v1 embeddings, method is post, uh, this is the body in JSON. Then we have our pinecone get a vector module, which looks like this, namespaces parts. I'm going to show you uh, how all of that works. Uh, then we have a router, essentially pinecone looks for that particular vector and it's essentially this little thing over here where we kind of briefly touched on it this little thing right it's the combination of the record id and then the chunk number so to speak we're looking for that in the vector database we have two uh, cases where we don't find it where we upsert and we create that vector and in the other case where we simply update so it looks like this very simple namespace parts then next thing is that we aggregate the vector id then we make sure that there is text essentially exists so we add this filter because we don't want to update Airtable needlessly and this is essentially what my Airtable setup looks like i'm basically uh, putting in the vectors uh, in there same thing for the case where we find something so essentially it looks exactly the same the uh, next text aggregator looks exactly the same. Filter looks exactly the same. And I'm just simply updating my record in exactly the same manner. That's basically it in terms of the make automation. Let's talk about Pinecone. So if you're not familiar with Pinecone, that's completely fine. I wasn't familiar with it either, but now I kind of start to learn it a little bit more and more. This is my take on this. There's people who are way more advanced in this particular case, but if you want to get started, this is where you do this. Go ahead and create an account, create an organization, and then go ahead and create a project. I've already created mine. Uh, which is called Q&A chat. I have got two indexes. You will have no indexes. So go ahead and create an index. Create index, give it a name. I don't know, something. Uh, they even like give you a suggestion. Lovely pine. The configuration that I've used is text embedding small. Go ahead and create that index. I've already created mine. Now you might be uh, wondering, what about namespaces? What are namespaces? So if your index is your database, your namespace is almost like a table, but the easiest way to describe it is a table. Of course, your API keys are in here, so go ahead and check those out. The other interesting thing that I couldn't really figure out, but then it was made evident. How do we create namespaces? Because there's no evident way to create a names namespace. Technically, when you are upserting vectors into a uh, pinecone, uh, just by defining the namespace, you will create the namespace. So if I'm defining parts over here in the first instance, when I'm creating a certain vector, the namespace will be created automatically for you. So don't worry about creating namespaces somewhere in pinecone. You don't need to. They will be automatically created. If if you are defining that's basically it in terms of pine cone let's go ahead and check out n8n the final stretch is actually setting up the chatbot and integrating it with Noloco. Super simple. There's only just like a few little modules that we need to set up. This is, of course, N8N, and I've been meaning to get use out of this platform for a very long time. So let's get going. First and foremost, you need to obviously sign up for an account. There's a link in the description below. Go ahead. Check that out. Affiliate link will help the channel. Thanks. The first thing that you need to do after you signed up, go ahead and create a new workflow. Give it a name. Uh, first step needs to be uh, this on chat message. Now, after you've set up the first step, 
go ahead and follow along with this tutorial if you want to set this up. So my first module is the on chat message or when the chat message is received, you will basically be greeted with some of these settings. I haven't really changed much. A lot of these settings, hosted chats, play around with this a little bit. I would say bounce between hosted chat and embedded chat it seems to have some sort of difference when you're embedding a chat. But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, both kind of work in certain cases. The next thing that you need to do is then hook it up to an AI agent. Now, if you haven't done this before and you're doing this for the first time, press plus on this little plus button and choose advanced AI and over here, AI agent. That's the module that you're looking for. I'm just going to delete this one. So I'm just going to hook up this one to the one that I already have got going on and nothing much in terms of changes or settings. It is all uh, as is. Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to set up a chat model. I'm using the OpenAI chat model. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and uh, hook this up. Press on this plus button and just choose OpenAI. That's what I've done. You can choose whichever one you want, but I've chosen OpenAI. Hook up your account. I'm using GPT-4, no other uh, settings of note. The next thing is the memory, and I'm just using the simple memory store over here. Hook it up. And again, I don't think I had any major changes other than this, the context window. So essentially, if you, s I, I think that by default, it's set to like four or something like this. And what this does, it basically says, look, you can remember up to how many messages messages in the past. So I'd like to set it to 20 so that my chat uh, bot knows more as I'm talking to it and stores more um, uh, in its memory. The next thing is, of course, the tools. So here uh, we need to choose the Pinecone Vector Store. If you haven't done this before, just go ahead and press on this plus button and look for Pinecone. And it's this one over here. Once you select it, you can hook it up and let's check out the settings. First of all, you have to connect your Pinecone account. Uh, operation mode is to retrieve documents as a tool for AI agent. Give this a name, could be anything you want, then give it a description. This plays a bit of a role, but as you can see from my description, it's fairly vague and it can be better, but for me it works. So retrieve relevant product information, yada, yada, yada. The next thing is of course the Pinecone index. So I have two indexes right now, but you can have more. I'm choosing the index that I need. The next thing is the limit. This is the amount of top results to fetch. In other words, when you're sending, maybe this is not the most technical description of, of what's happening, but essentially it's the amount of results you want to get from your Pinecone database. Uh, this was set up to something fairly low, if I remember correctly, and my chatbot wasn't always fetching the right stuff, or I felt like it wasn't fetching enough stuff. So I have set this limit to 8,000, 8, then I changed it to 9,000. And it feels like, yes, I may be consuming more operations in general or more tokens with my OpenAI account because it gets processed afterwards. However, I'm getting more consistent results. So I don't really care. 9,000 is good experiment with this. Find a, a limit that works for you. Then include metadata, of course, because there's metadata in every vector. And then which namespace do you want to use? I'm setting it to be parts and I have a feeling that this could be dynamic. So in other words, if I had another namespace like bikes and not just the spare parts, I could get this to be dynamic by using the expression builder over here in 4N8M. But yeah, for now, it's just hard coded. Final thing is the embedding model that I that you need to use. If you haven't done so already, just press on this plus button and choose embeddings open AI. For embeddings open AI, these are the settings that I've used. Nothing really crazy, just hook up your account. Embedding three small, that's it. No other settings, everything is fairly default. Let's talk about how to set this whole thing up on the loco. Fairly straightforward. When you are ready, the first thing that you need to fetch is this URL over here. Yours is going to be different. Don't copy mine. <laughs> copy yours. The next thing, of course, is to uh, also add allowed origins course. Uh, if it's a star, it means that any origin is uh, available. Play around with that as well, but I'm just using the star for now. Now, the next thing that I will suggest that you do is to visit this page over here. Uh, this is like an extension of the NAN documentation 
NAN has got fantastic documentation to begin with, but this is like extended version of um, what to do and how to work with the chat embedding um, process, so to speak. What I've done, I've taken this particular script and I've pasted it into my Noloco settings. Jump into settings and custom code over here inside of Noloco. The first part is that link part this link thing just paste that into the settings the second part is that script now the script needs uh, a few tweaks or uh, for it to work and the first tweak is over here so your production webhook url that's the url that you copied just now this url that needs to be pasted in essentially you don't need anything else everything else is fine but if you want to tweak the chat you can you can read all about it in this uh, little doc here's some extra things that you can push there's a lot of interesting things that you can customize with this chat i mean of course there's css that you can tweak and all of that good stuff but basically as soon as you've pasted all of this code in just make sure that you've published your app and you will see this little uh bubble uh appear and Bob's your uncle. What can I say? What a time to be alive. You can create a custom CRM in minutes, basically. And you can also talk to your data using AI. How freaking cool is that? What a time to be alive. See you in the next one. Cheers.